Okay, this is a, a typical cattail flower. <clears throat> in the springtime, sorry, in the springtime, um, this is a lot smaller. This is actually the male flower up here. This is the female flower. <clears throat> it's wind pollinated, like I said. In the springtime, they're separated by a little indentation, so you can tell the male from the female. <clears throat> and they're green, and they're you know about that big around, you know. And when they're that small, you can pick them and boil them and put garlic and butter on them and taste them like, you know, they don't taste like corn on the cob, but you cook them and eat them like corn on the cob. They don't taste bad. They're not ravingly delicious, but they're, but they're not bad, you know. I mean, there's definitely a food that's nutritious for it. <clears throat> In that time, if you wait just a little bit longer, you'll see this male flower start to get ripply on the edges. And you just touch it like that and you'll see a ton of yellow pollen coming off of it. So it's like I said, it's wind pollinated. So the wind will blow and it'll tap another plant, the pollen will come off and it will fertilize another female flower somewhere down the road. <clears throat> but that pollen is edible, so you can collect that pollen. And what we do is we just get a paper, uh, plastic bag and we bend it over and then shake it. And we collect the pollen you know, off of all these male flowers. <clears throat> then you can take it home and you can use the pollen as a flower substitute. You can make cattail pollen pancakes, which is really cool because they're bright yellow, you know. The pollen is bright yellow. If you collect pollen for half a day, you're bright yellow, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> but it is kind of fun, you know, to, to, uh, to collect the pollen. <clears throat> and you don't use it 100% as flour, you use it to cut the flour. So it produces a, uh, it's a, di a unique taste. It's very, it's very good taste. It's not a bad taste at all. And you use it, I've known people to thicken spaghetti sauce with it and all sorts of stuff like that. Make pot, cattail pollen bread. And so, <clears throat> so this is the female flower then. You know, you can eat the male and female flower, you know, when they're smaller than this. Uh, when they're green and you boil them, and, oh, you can eat them raw. <clears throat> so now the female flower is, this is this year's current flower. And you can see that the, still there was some uh, residue left in the male flower on this and I just rubbed it off. But this next year will become, it'll start to become swollen and it'll start to break apart. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it'll start to break apart yeah. and uh, you know that's the seed inside there and the seed is edible too but it's very very tiny. So what the Indians would do they would gather a lot of this what they call down you know like goose down or something but it was cattail pollen uh, cattail down and they would flash burn it and only the seeds would be left you know so then they would eat the seeds. <coughs> um, but another thing you can use as a survival tool, um, if any, well, none of us are wearing long sleeves right now, but let's say we have a long sleeve shirt or a long sleeve jacket, um, and you know it's going to get cold out, you know, maybe below freezing or below zero, and you find some cattails, you take the cattails and you, and you take the down apart, and you try to find the older ones because you can see that. Okay? And uh, you stuff it in between your shirt and your, and your coat. And basically what you're doing is making a down coat. And so this will keep you really warm. <clears throat> Another thing, if uh, you're at Alcatraz and want to escape and you want to float <laughs> through the water or something like that, uh, and there's cattails there or something, which I doubt there are, but <clears throat> um, anyhow, they would use, they don't, I don't think they use it anymore, but they would use cattail down in life preservers, the real cheap oh. life preservers, because it's very buoyant. So they would stuff life preservers with cattail pollen in, in plastic bags and cover it with canvas, and that was a good life preserver. So that's another thing you can use it for is warmth, you know. <clears throat> it's also a good tinder for fire starting when you spark based fire starting, because uh, it can catch real easy, you know. This is a little bit moist. You can feel some moisture in there when you first cut it open. Okay, 
But the most important food source in cattail is the roots. The best time to collect the, collect the roots is right now into the winter time. And what you do is uh, they, uh, they actually pr produce what's called a rhizome, which is very common in the grass family. <clears throat> so you dig these, these roots and rhizomes out, and they can be, a, I mean, you almost need a backhoe to pull this stuff big, out. Yeah. yeah, they get really, I mean, bigger, way bigger than yeah. that. You know, is, yeah, they can get that big, you know, easily. And what you do is you can take those, um, there's, there's new little shoots coming out of them, little points, kind of like, like well, little arrowheads or something, except they're not arrow shaped, they're a little round point. And uh, um, you can cut those off and cook those and eat them. And what you can take, the biggest thing is you take the rhizomes and you peel the outside. And you know how if, when you buy a carrot and you cut the carrot in half and you can see the carrot's got an inner core, you know, versus the outer part, you know. And the inner core, is the same thing happens on the cattail root. So you peel off that stringy outer core and you use that inner core and you just break it up in water and stuff and starch comes out of it. And you can use that starch for flour and it's very nutritious. So you can, you can literally get hundreds of pounds of starch out of something this big. And you eat the root as well? Well, no, that is the root, basically, oh, the, the okay. rhizomes, yeah. Um, it's a modified stem that acts as a root, is what a rhizome is. So, <clears throat> you can use the, the cattail rhizomes for a lot of nutrition, and this is the best time of year to co collect it. And uh, all through the winter, in the summer, you won't find as much starch in it because it's using all that stored energy that basically starch is, the stored energy for plants so to produce carbohydrates. Yeah.